Hello, uh, this is Ankan Pashu. I'm a geologist, and today I'm gonna teach you how to do uh, overburden isopack map using the Carlson software. Well, to do that, you need pretty much two things one is your structure grid, and another is your topography grid. And you get your overburden grid by manipulating the two grids using the following equation that you see on the screen. <coughs> so, what I'm saying, say you have a particular seam, say a cold seam, and you want to know the overburden above that, that horizon. So, you need to create a structure map for your cold seam and you have to have a digital topography for your area then you create your grids manipulate both of the grids to get your overburden grid and then just isopack your grid to get your overburden map okay here I have um, two files, two DWG files, which is one is the structure lines, the other is topography DWG and I have my Carlson Mining 2011 with AutoCAD installed already and here is my topography file and uh, it's a digital topo so you have the Z values assigned to all of those contour lines already and I also have a structure map this somebody already figured it out what's the structure of that same and 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 my draft person they already assigned the z values in here so all i need to do is is create a grid file for the structure first and then use the same location and size of the grid file for the structure to make a grid file for the topo on exactly the same area and go from there Okay, to do a grid file in, in, in SARFCAD, there are a bunch of different ways. The, the easiest way that I always do, go to, the, go to my geology module, if you click on that, you see the grid menu, it will come up. Just click on grid, then make 3D grid file. And just save it by whatever name you like. I already have a grid made, which is structure grid 10 by 10. And... I'm going to use the same name over there. And it's asking, do you want to replace it? I'll just say yes. And it's asking source data. And I, I have all my data on my screen, so I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to use the screen entities. Low, high, I'm not going to change. And I'm going to use the triangulation modeling method. And do a screen pick. And, and use a number of cell for my grid resolution and I'll make that 10 by 10 okay and maybe I don't need the need the, need the overburden map for the entire area so I'll, I'm just going to do something like that much maybe Well, let's let's do it again and and choose a little little bigger area than what it, what we had. So go back, select my file name again. Try to save it. Everything is same. Hit OK, and say I'll do that much of area. Okay, now it's asking me to select objects, so I'll go somewhere outside and choose a bigger area. So it has selected all my structural lines and you just need to hit enter twice and now it's calculating your grid files and everything and when it's done it will prompt you that it's done and it will show you the location right here it is I'm not sure why this prompt came up shouldn't be but anyway 
I'll just cancel it. And then I go to my uh, topography file and do the same thing. Go to the grid, make a 3D grid file. And I already had a topography grid made, so I'm just gonna select it and I'm gonna replace it. And over here, I'm still using triangulation. I am not using an inclusion or exclusion boundary and this time I'm not my the grid position this is important my grid position it has to come from a different file which has to be my structure grid that I have already created now if you hit OK then it's asking for which file to use so I'll go and say this is the file that you want to use and hit OK then it's asking for so you can see it's already selected the same area as that, that that black boundary now again you have to select the object so I'll just go outside my area then select everything and do an enter so it's again it's doing some calculation calculations right now and when it's done it will say that it has created that file yeah here we go so so now I have created two grid files. Let's see. Uh, can um, group by type. Okay. So if you, you can see that we have created the structure grid and the topographic grid, and the overburden grid is the third third one that we are gonna create. Now to do that, we do some grid manipulation, and it's done using the GFU, which is again under grid it's called grid file euclid it's a very important tool if you go there uh, you this thing comes up you do select grids and you select the structure grid first no no, no sorry the topographic grid first you want to uh, topographic grid minus structure grid is your overburden grid so select that one first and say ho say open and here at the top it says that your topographic grid is already selected and you do subtract grid and select your mm, structure grid hit open and then here at the top it says that it has modified 1486548 grid node so you know it's done doing what you wanted now you want to save this and you want to save this at, as the overburden grid okay now you can exit this now you have the overburden grid file so all you need right now is to contour from your overburden grid and contouring is also done under the grid menu if you go there and do contour from a grid file and click double enter select your overburden grid just open it then here control over button you see your z values the range of your z values is here then control intervals you can do 100 or 200 let's do at 100 maybe and index you can select colors and stuff like that you can change the colors to red if you like it index interval five. that's okay uh, then maybe change that color to red also and never do the smooth contours it, it I mean it would slow your process so much I try not to use it uh, but I think I'm kind of done selecting my options now all I need to do is hit OK now it's it's again converting edges and doing whole bunch of calculations and soon enough you will see another prompt for the interval that you want to see it's starting depth is asking do I want to start a hundred yeah why not say hundred ending depth let's say twelve hundred and it's now it's actually drawing your lines and as you know the drawing that the lines should follow the contours pretty well and if you see over here here is a line for the thousand feet of overburden above the scene that we had the structure for and you can say that I have index contours in every 500 feet so here's 500, 600, 700, 900, 800, 900 and 1000 so it's a, it's a 
it's a it's the overburden map above the structure for the scene that we have been working um, normally when you do you may have to create your your structure map from like the original data collection original database and where whereas in this in this lesson we just started from uh, available structure map <coughs> in another lesson we might be able to teach you how to do a structure map from just the borehole data well thanks for watching the video and if you have any questions please please don't hesitate to contact me thank you very much